Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! My name is Twitchy and last time we managed to get our first tourist space station up in orbit and even run two missions to get someone up there and back again, thus approving its full functionality. We also took a small repair mission out to the Mun to make sure that we could actually use some of these new engineer powers that Kerbal 1.12 has brought us. This time we're going to explore those powers a little bit more and make our way over to try a actual repair repair mission rather than putting a new part onto an existing ship. But until we do that, my name is Twitchy, and welcome to my final career. Year 1, day 47. The sun is rising and I have an urge to go to the moon. And that's right, we've got a few contracts that we can do here. One of them to go and repair a craft. One of them to pick up a stranded Kerbal. I mean, that, that sounds great. We could do with more Kerbals. And send some science from around the moon. These are three missions that we can do relatively easy. And we've got a craft already built and ready to go. This is the last craft that we took to the moon. A couple of things to note there. One, the sunrise playing out on the side of the craft. And the other thing, I put some RGB lights up on top. We've We've got the blue and the green in view there. When I spin the craft round for a pitch manoeuvre, you'll see that there is red on the back. All right, now we are keeping an eye on the amount of fuel in the side tanks there. Because I have used the fuel priorities to make sure that they empty first, the fuel gauges on the left-hand side kind of lie to us. As you can see, now is the time to drop my tanks, but I've completely missed it. I'm just talking away to stream here, carrying this dead weight up into orbit with me. The, uh, the extra engines and stuff, totally not necessary. Finally, I do a stage, explosion all around we should know how messy that explosion was that's going to come back and bite me later on but right now it's working out quite well much like last time that we took this rocket into the air it doesn't quite have the to weight ratio to make its way into orbit the the standard way that i would normally do we've gone up in quite a shallow ascent trying to push my apple apps as far forwards as possible so we have the maximum hang time for this tiny tiny engine it's the skipper remember not a mainsail i would give my right arm for a mainsail right now Drifting our way up to the actual Apple apps. This is where it's most efficient to circularize our bow, and, and we are going to make our way into a very nice circular orbit. Take a moment just to ch level check my contracts, make sure that I haven't forgotten any. Uh, quite often, I have made my way up into orbit and gone, oh, I forgot to take this contract. I should go and take that again. And if you're not totally on the ball, it could be one of the contracts that it really does matter for. Once we are in a circular orbit, I do the standard thing of putting down a maneuver node about a quarter of the way round the orbit in front of the moon uh, so I can when I pull up the the Apple apps it touches further round in the moon's orbit because obviously the moon needs to travel that far in the same time you're traveling up very nicely being demonstrated on screen right now uh, the next thing I need to know is what side of the moon I actually need to end up on of course I have a target a target of a stranded Kerbal as you can see Mod Modard's capsule there is waiting for me and we need to make sure that we end up in the right place at the right time so that we can meet up with those with the minimal expense expenditure of fuel. That's the theory anyway. It never really works out exactly to plan. That's why I always over overstack the fuel tanks in my missions. I, ju I just know what it's like to be me. Okay, we've turned the lights off because they were draining quite a lot of power. Thankfully, we have uh, alternators in our engines here, so we have almost instantly completely refilled our batteries. Lessons should have been learnt here. We'll just leave that at that. Lessons should have been learned here. Uh, the manoeuvre has been finished, and it looks like we've got very, very nice trajectory coming in through the moon, so we can line ourselves up to get another set of manoeuvre nodes to see if we can't just go straight for a rendezvous. Of course, these manoeuvres that I'm placing down now are more just proof of concept than actually the ones that I'm going to be using, apart from the first one. The first one, very much the one that I'm going to be using, but the, from the second manoeuvre node on, I know that things are going to go a little bit wrong, just a little bit, and because orbits are one of these special chaotic situations well I mean not quite chaotic but it's very sensitive to how you set it up to begin with and if I'm just at a few meters per second uh, short or over I will miss my mark by quite a wide margin the first thing that I want to do when I move into the moon's sphere of influence is to change my inclination relative to the moon to be the same as the inclination that Monard's capsule has got. This means that I can choose anywhere along my orbit to be able to make any adjustments and because we're at the same angle, we will meet at the other side or at least 
the two lines that are our imaginary orbits will meet at the other side. It's all down to timing to make sure that our capsules meet. And that is the thing that we need to figure out. But first, the burn for the inclination. 35 meters per second, a drop in the 3.3 kilometer bucket that we have carried with us. Working on my maneuver node here at the descending node, obviously I didn't get our inclinations exactly perfect. I don't believe the game would support exactly perfect. Whenever I've gone perfect to the zeroth degree, we have got a not a number, uh, but I've had to use hacks to make that happen. Anyway, as I was saying, at my descending node, I've done a pretty extreme maneuver to make sure that we meet up in one solid pass because I have the three kilometers of delta v that i brought with me i feel like we can dive down upon them and then just burn almost all the fuel that we brought with us to put our orbit into the same circularization as that one it also gives us the added bonus of being able to cast aside our booster tank that we brought with us because it's it's now done most of its job and we can let it crash into the surface of the moon but first, a small beauty shot before we accelerate our way down to the same altitude as Modard's capsule there. 25 kilometers separate us, and with my engine on full blast, we're going to just try our best to burn at the anti-target marker. Uh, I'm actually burning a little bit off just to try and preempt the drift that's going to happen. Obviously, Modard's capsule is traveling pretty quickly down towards the bottom left of the screen to stay in orbit around the moon. We're headed towards the moon very quickly. Bit of a mismatch there, so if I, I buy um, just a little bit off we can actually slow ourselves down whilst also pushing ourselves in the correct direction we've now got ourselves into a situation that i would consider survivable if everything went wrong we're no longer crashing into the surface of the moon we're not headed straight for a collision with our target if everything went wrong everything would be fine but everything's not going to go wrong we are within a 700 meters of our target vessel here and just going to let ourselves drift with the power of time warp one of the things that i had to learn pretty early on in this game is uh, almost a, a level of patience uh, at least a trust in the time warp don't try and do a burn to get yourself there quicker just let some more time pass anyway we've got modard out of the capsule welcome aboard and welcome to the new force that is what objective one of three we have two more to go and do but first let's take this satisfying moment of watching the booster core crash into the surface of the moon it is unfortunate that it is on the dark side of the moon but we'll throw in some extra brightness boost just to enable us to see oh beautiful what an explosion cold and lonely they cast me out here to drift on my own in the wilds of space and why for my confidence for my abilities to excel my want to do what others could not, they've sent me out here for science. Well, I'll give them science. Uh, sir, we got the data that came from uh, Mr. Jebediah out in space, but there's uh, some, some images that came with. Put them on screen now. Um, sir, I'm not sure. Did Jebediah really mean to send this? I think it's time we gave Jebediah another destination. Somewhere very prestigious. I think it's time to send Jeb to Eve. Jeb Solar Science giving us a nice little boon of about a quarter of a million credits there. That was pretty tasty. Right, so we are trying to head our way over to this high inclination satellite that is heading around the moon. The easiest way to do that is, of course, going to the ascending or descending node, whichever one is closest to you, and trying to match your orbits once again. If you want to have a real efficient go at it, you can use this first pass to actually lift up the orbit on the other side. That is the side with the other ascending or descending node push that as far up as the sphere of influence would allow and then use that higher slower point in your orbit to change the inclination this is more efficient at larger angle changes so whether it's worth to push that other side of your orbit up or not is totally down to the mission you are on take a moment in stream to show the new chat enterers that we have uh, three colors of light on the craft and also that we have now the persistent rotation mod even though we've done some time warping our craft is still rotating to me it feels like it's taken a way of cheating out of the game but it has introduced some other problems remember how i said our battery was likely to die but it was okay because we had an alternator in our engine well the terrier engine lacks the alternator so we now have a situation where we have a spinning craft spinning not on the axis of the way we want to go this proves to be an absolute carnage of a situation to find myself in uh, i'm spinning around i'm trying to bring my 
target markers in line with each other. All I can do is really point roughly in the right direction. I am having an absolute nightmare on stream as things just drift in and out of orientation, but it's, it's, it's getting on top of me. And actually I'm like, maybe, maybe we should just give up here and go home. But I have a little epiphany. I remember the lesson that I've learned in The Witness. When things are going wrong, don't just keep struggling with the same plan. Think about another way of doing it. And that's right, I got a Kerbal out and I knocked him on the light. Slowed down our rotation enough so that we could actually point ourselves in the right direction. Got ourselves a nice close encounter. But we still were not solid enough to be able to go straight there with the craft. In fact, the rotation was just unwieldy enough that I was like, no, we're not going to be able to do this like this. But I do have another plan. Let's try and get ourselves a nice close encounter, ideally as slow and as low angle as possible. And I managed to get this one lined up here. I, I think it's great. I've got an idea. I've got, I have got. used to have this series of missions with the Making History Mission Builder expansion called Double OK. And one of the missions in there was to go out and try and catch another craft on EVA. Thanks to that, I have got this set of skills that enables me to get out my engineer and enemy here and go fly towards the other craft. There is a little bit of a problem that the target marker does not appear to be showing on the screen. Busting out the Kerbal Engineer so I can see how far away it is. 60, 60 kilometers, 30 kilometers, it's right here. Why Why did we never see any any marker for it? I, I don't know. This display of orbital excellence unfortunately makes this all the more sad. Two EVA repair kits are needed. I only brought one with me. I mean, we're not even gonna mention the fact that we actually left it back in the other capsule but even if we did manage to remember to bring it along with me we wouldn't have had enough we would have only had one when we needed two this is this is very bad obviously if we can't complete the contract what are we gonna do so objectively we've got two options here we can either send a delivery package out to these guys or bring these guys home and send another mission out after a discussion with stream uh, whilst flying this guy back we decided that we're going to take this crew home and we're going to bring another crew back setting up a quick and easy maneuver this one is going to kick us outside of the moon's sphere of influence and because i am that good at the game also line us up for a nice 40 kilometer aero break with a kerbin we time warped our way down to about 2,000 kilometers and using the trajectories mod we were trying to line ourselves up a pretty close approach to the Kerbal Space Center. You do get a bit more money when you land close to it when you recover the craft, a bit more money from the uh, the part recovery. There's uh, a cost associated with all of this. Anyway, we are diving down into the atmosphere and uh, a crazy situation is just starting to build up here. We have lost three nose cones from our fuel tanks, but there's three very specific nose cones. You might notice that we've set up some sort of water mill effect here you know where it's flat on one edge pointy on the other and it's the same all the way around for all three of those and it's just getting worse we do not have any electric to be able to slow ourselves down we're just picking up more and more and more speed Jessmore is loving herself an enemy doesn't really know what's going on and modard First flight, first re-entry for Modard. Probably not the best way to have been introduced to this particular situation. The fire is raging, the deacceleration is happening, but we are not that far above the ground and we are coming down pretty hard. And I'm not sure what inf what impact the spinning around is having on the drag model here. I have uh, no idea whether we are actually slowing down enough or not. It's getting to the point where I'm quite worried about it. Uh, I'm gonna go as far as to pop the parachute shoots nice and early if maybe that will help us out somewhat also gonna turn on the ambient light boost doesn't do quite as much as i hope so uh, maybe maybe we'll do it in edit as well Hopefully you will forgive the horrific burnout that is now on the UI. The parachutes pop and it's a bit imperceptible at the moment, but I think we actually sped up. I think we actually got a little bit faster when those came out. That was a little bit unfortunate. I was kind of expecting them to be the saving grace, adding a little bit of drag. But of course, the, the middle shoot is in the middle. The other two, they, I mean, they're kind of in the middle as well. So maybe, maybe there is a problem with the drag situation there. Now I'm just wondering, what, what are we going to do? Are we going to have to drop someone out in EVA? Is, is that a way that's going to... Oh, 
Oh, we just had to wait for the parachutes to deploy properly. Okay, that's fine. It slowed everything down enough that actually everyone is going to survive this. I think we're going to survive this. I mean, there are, there is still the final 500 meters to go down. We could have a horrific accident. Modard could get out and throw herself off the grass because of the horrific PTSD she's had from that re-entry. I don't know. All sorts of things uh, could happen right now. But right now, we need to start thinking about what we're going to be doing for this mission. And whilst these guys are going to the moon, I would like to take a moment right right here to thank every single one of my Patreon. These are the guys and girls that will keep me focused, keep me passionate about making these Kerbal Space program videos. Sometimes my friends will say, Twitchy, would you like to go snorkeling off the Bermuda coast trying to search for any of those shipwrecks laden with gold, they tell me, but I'm like, no. My friends, I cannot. I must make these videos. These videos that are out there to entertain everyone who stumbles across them on the internet. But more importantly, there are people that depend on me. People that are asking for this regular content and they show me the support with their generous, generous monetary donations. So I hope you will join me in thanking these beautiful people that help make sure that this series and the whole sorts of other stuff that we do in the background continues to happen. Same day, same ship, different crew. We are sending Valentina, Bill, and a tourist out to the Mun. In fact, they are even at the Mun now as we speak, trying to set up a rendezvous with our broken vessel. Learning lessons from the past, we have gone ahead and done such wondrous upgrades as putting RCS ports on the outside of the craft so we can slow down any spin that happens. Adding more EVA repair kits to the cockpit so that we could, you know, do the mission that we're there to do. And a few small quality of life things such as solar panels on the outside and communication arrays to send some information back. Anyway, we are fast approaching on our target here and I have switched to the targeting and nav ball speed display. It's definitely the easiest way of matching up our orbits as we've come close to each other that I have found during my years of playing Kerbal Space Program. As you're approaching a sort of 100 kilometers away or something like that, I start to try and burn towards the retrograde target marker whilst bearing in mind the uh, the piece of advice that I've been giving throughout this entire series that when you are per burning towards the retrograde you can push the yellow circle away from you so I try and get the yellow circle and the pink circle to match up the only way really that you can dock if those two are matching up you are going to head towards the same place in space and time if they're not lined up then you will not Talking of space and time, I'm fairly sure our target is occupying its own little space and time bubble. If we have a look at the Kerbal Engineer in the left hand side, you can see that we are less than 600 meters away from it, or 700 meters away from it. We should be able to see it. This this totally means that it should be uh, visible to us. The Kerbal game will render anything within two and a half kilometers, and I've actually got mods that make the game render anything for up to a much further distance than that. And for some reason, I just cannot see it. There's no target marker around it, despite the fact that I do indeed have it selected as my target marker less than 200 meters to go I've kind of given up on trying to oh there it is it's popped it's popped into existence on the top of our screen I've kind of given up trying to use my main engine here and swapped to the monoprop expecting it to be uh, good enough for the job we want I ran out of monoprop I could I could have slowed down the craft with the engine but I was like it's okay Bill Kerman engineer extraordinaire can get the job done whilst the two craft are drifting apart from each other on different orbits He's got out, he's already done the repair, he is drifting back home. Bill Kerman, everybody, let's... Yes, I, I agree, he is very, very good at his job. When we started this episode, we had three objectives and we have now completed four of them. I know, amazing. The first flight took care of the scientific objective and rescuing Monard from the orbit of around the moon. And this one took care of the repair and we took a tourist along with us. We showed them other worldly sites, not just taking them to another planet, well, I suppose another body, the Mun itself, but also Bill Kerman showing an otherworldly display of engineering skills, flying to the other target, doing the fix and then coming back back to the, the vessel he left from. Absolutely amazing. So I have just set up a maneuver node that will take us home, but then I also thought, hey, let's let's apply a little bit of hindsight here. Every now and then the contract doesn't quite get completed the way I think it does, and I checked my contracts, and actually we hadn't taken our tourist deep enough into the moon's gravity well. So whilst we were just, just on our way to leave, actually what I ended up doing was turning my craft around and burning down my periaps to bring us down low enough that the tourist is, is happy to have seen individual boulders. I don't, I don't know exactly why they 
they wanted to go so much lower than where they were answers in the comment if you have any idea uh, yeah seeing the boulders seems to be the only thing I can uh, think of but with that done I then just make a little burn to leave the mun gonna set the craft rotating we've got the persistent rotation mod why not do it I think the place place that's really gonna shine is when we start making rotating space stations we're watching the moon as we descend out of our orbit we're coming down about a 39 kilometer aero break and I've noticed as we are about 800 kilometers up in the air that we can make a huge huge left hand turn and maybe end up at Woomerang launch site up there Woomerang is the launch site that is furthest away from the equator so it's going to be quite a hard thing to pull off but I'm going to give it a go anyway uh, one thing that I noticed immediately is actually when you've already got the X down on the globe it becomes pretty difficult to move it further up unless you are going to push your orbit all the way up that then becomes difficult knowing where you're going to end up landing uh, so you end up like going out and coming back and making several guesses uh, I got one as close as I could that ended up burning just a little bit more fuel than I had in the tank but we're not ones to let excessive wants get in our way. In fact, I believe we built the entire foundation of our space program on excessive wants. So we're going to go ahead and do this maneuver. We are burning our engines towards the sun like a madman trying to hold back the solar wind with a chemical hose. We know that's never going to work, but it's not going to stop us anyway. We are performing a maneuver here where we're trying to burn up as towards the north as much as possible because that's going to get us as close to Woomerang up as possible. And as that red X is getting close I'm, I'm hearing some noises and that's right we are in the atmosphere the plasma is burning and I feel like now it's not the time to be trying to change our trajectory I'm watching lights and solar panels disappear off into the plasma in front of us that's fine we don't need them at this point would have been nice to hold on to them for some recovery costs but that will be fine I was kind of killing myself at stream Tuesday 6 to 8 whatever time zone Britain happens to be in at the moment but yeah I was kidding myself on stream that maybe the these were the mountains of Woomerang. I didn't quite take in the map data that I flashed up every now and then. And of course, no, these aren't. We didn't even make it halfway there. We had to cut the burn off early and we lost a bunch of weight as the things were exploding around us. It was all good fun and we really, we don't need to go there. It just would have got us a bit more money back. But a mountainous landing could be a tricksy landing. I don't have any way of really altering my trajectory at this point so we are just up in the hands of the ballistic gods noticing that we are still careening forwards at quite the rate i always feel this with almost every landing though I, i'm looking at the uh, altimeter seeing about 30 coming down to maybe 25 kilometers and i'm like are we actually gonna stop in time but yes yes we very much do it just leads to a bit of panic but of course we have been falling for some time now it's probably time to start thinking about the parachutes and i get valentina out just to have a little bit of a fly around i forget which viewer it was that made this suggestion last stream that if maybe being under parachutes was so boring you could get a kerbal out for eva and fly them around on their stunt parachute i was like oh that's that's so blindingly obvious i feel stupid for not having thought of that before and i put i curled up in a ball of embarrassment and, I, and because of that i've forgotten your name i i am i'm sorry but with that i am gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen we have made ourselves despite two separate launches we have made ourselves 1.1 million credits today it was indeed a big money making a mission i'll see you guys next time where we're gonna go off and explore the green or minty wonders of minmus but i'll see you then when we're gonna do that bye